you don't want to be controlling an adult child. Right. In fact, you want them to take control of their own lives. And self-control is the is is the name of the game. And so trying to control, uh, maintain control through that time period where they naturally are taking charge of their lives, that's that's a prescription for disaster and conflict. Hey everyone, this is Yvette Hampton. Welcome back to the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. I am back today with my good friend, Roger Smith. And we're talking about parenting this week. And like we talked about in episode one, homeschooling is parenting. That's really all that it is. I mean, we're, we're throwing academics on top of it. And so yes, that's part of it. But even with that, it's parenting our kids. It's teaching them the way that God created them. It's teaching them the things of the Lord. It's directing their hearts towards Christ. It's disciplining them. It's discipling them. It's, it's, you know, feeding them. I mean, parenting isn't just providing a house, a roof over their heads and clothes for their body and food for their tummies. It's so much more than that. And so we're talking about all those things this week. And Roger's been so gracious to come on with us this week and talk about parenting. He is a doctor. He deals with kids all the time, has for many, many years. And so we're so grateful for his expertise in uh, talking with us. But before we get back into our conversation, I want to say thank you to our sponsor, CTC Math. If you guys are looking for a great online math program, go to CTC Math dot com and try them out for free ctcmath.com all right roger we are back and we are talking about discipline and in the last episode on wednesday we talked about discipline of younger children because of course the younger years are different than the middle years and the high school years you know every every stage is different but then every child is different too and so of course that can Mm -hmm. add a whole lot of um I don't want to say complication, but, but it can take a lot of effort from a parent to know how to discipline in in all those different years, especially if you've got multiple kids, but let's move into kind of those middle school years, those preteen years, as they're trying to just figure out who in the world they are and how God made them and what they're supposed to do with this thing that we call life. How do we discipline through those years? You know, uh, is, there's no doubt that as, as a child grows, you know, and sometimes they grow faster than their years. You know, every child's different. Sometimes, you know, they have follow a typical pattern. Sometimes you have a seven-year-old that seems like an adult, you know, and so emotionally they develop uh, in different phases. And so it's imperative that we understand and know our child and know how our child responds to different methods or approaches to correction. And so there is definitely no absolute, this is one rule, one approach that fits every child, every situation. And so that's what makes the parenting job so hard. And and uh, and we've all made mistakes. We've all done the wrong thing, said the wrong thing, you know, so there's no doubt we're going to, um, we're going to um, use a, a wrong approach uh, along the way, but can we get smarter and wiser? And that's the whole goal of learning about this job of parenting. Uh, and so, uh, you know, children, uh, as they exit the early years, they're, they're, they're becoming more emotional. And, and I talk about this in the book that, that emotions kind of come alive in the, uh, in the preteen years. And it seems like they, all they say all their their terms are I'm tired or I'm exhausted or I'm excited or you know all the words that they will use have a, you know an emotional charge to it and so it's important to to be careful with emotion during those years and uh, and so uh, we've got to stay calm because they're going from one extreme to the <laughs> other and so even in our correction is that it has to be very clear And I would say that they understand words during those years. They understand concepts. And so we don't have to use the language of physical pain to correct. And it should be, let's talk about what desired behavior is. And so sometimes uh, it's just slowing them down enough to let them think and get them out of the feeling and, and training their thinking. And so discipline is as much training as it is punishment. So uh, it's it's very important to keep those things in mind, particularly in those preteen years. So and yeah, then yeah. as as we get into the the high school years, 
it, it's it's more that we should be helping them to to dream and pursue those things and foster that. So it, it's more of a launching and and not so much as you know hemming them in. It's more of an idea of saying, okay, we're helping you to find your path, and we're encouraging you along, pushing them forward rather than holding them back. You know, one one example from the preteen years uh, of uh, a training technique uh, that that we used uh, to try to n not make it as as harsh, but to make it a true true training and correction is that during those that that time period, our oldest children were uh, in competitive horseback riding, and with uh, competitive riding, you have all these different things that are made of leather. There are saddles, and there are uh, uh, spur straps, and there are all kinds of uh, halters and different things. And so leather has to be conditioned to be, to remain supple and, and useful. And, uh, and so, but no one really ever wanted to take time to do that. And at the very same time, uh, the children were becoming very chaotic in, in their taking care of their personal things, ball gloves and, and hats and books and, articles of clothing they were they were just kind of dropping them wherever and and uh so i had i had a choice to make and that was i could uh go through the house uh stomping my foot and shouting and but because it's a highly charged emotionally charged time period and you knew it needed to be more controlled but it needed to have a punishment that was linked to a desired behavior and so um, we, we, we came up with this plan where I had a, I got a big cardboard box and it was the, the jail for items that were out of their place. And so, so I could go through the house at any time, night or day. And if something was on the floor, it was not in its place, I could get that item and throw it in the box. And that, but they had to redeem it. And so we, we were teaching the idea of redemption. You, there's a price to redeem an item and that's scriptural. Okay, so, so to redeem any of their items that were in the box, they had to condition one piece of, piece of leather. And so they could do it while we were watching a movie or telling stories or reading books or different things. So it didn't have to be total painful, but it was something that everybody knew it needed to be done. Nobody really wanted to do it, but it was their price for redeeming their item. And so I loved it whenever it was a favorite pair of shorts or it was their ball glove or something that they had to have. And I knew that they would sense the, the, in a sense, the pain of having to uh, redeem it. And, and, and so that concept of redemption uh, became a very, uh, very well-known concept. And, and today I see them doing the very same things in their lives. You know, whenever they need to fix something, they know that there's a price to, to fixing it. And that's just normal training. Yeah. And so sometimes the, 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 the correction is not totally painful. It is training. There's a cost to it, but it didn't have to be painful. And it certainly didn't have to be emotional. And, and so uh, having a plan uh, like the, the cardboard jail, that, that kept us from getting emotional. We just said, oops, you uh, broke the rules here. There's a price to pay. And so they knew, and, and it wasn't, it was more relational. It wasn't like I was trying to, but, you know, they, they knew I was not trying to cause them harm and that they really were the ones that caused their own trouble. So, so there, there are things like that, that we can do creatively to train our children, to correct our children in a non-emotional, non-harsh or, you know, injurious way. Yeah, I love that. And I think it's so important to teach our kids to take responsibility for their actions because kids who don't take responsibility for their actions grow up to be adults who don't take responsibility for their actions. And then they go into marriage and they never want to, want to be that spouse who says, I'm sorry, I messed up. Will you please forgive me? And when we teach our kids to do that, they'll have so much more success in their marriage because then they learn to do that. I've had to learn to do that as an adult. And I still have a hard time doing that, but I was one, you know, growing up, I never <laughs> ever was required to, or could admit that I was wrong about anything. And so, you know, it's been a hard 
a hard journey for me in my marriage to learn to say, you know, man, yeah, I really screwed up. Garrett's much better at it than I am. But, you know, I'm really sorry that I hurt you in this way or that I did this or did that. And so, you know, I, I think it's important to teach our kids to just own it. Just take ownership. It doesn't mean you're a terrible right. person. It just right. means you made a mistake. We all make mistakes. We all do dumb right. things. Let's get past right. this and move on to the next thing. So, um, yeah, that's good stuff. Let's take a break. We'll be right back. What we do at IEW is break through the the noise of the grammar and the writing prompts, and we say, this is what you do, step by step. And I've witnessed it over and over again, both watching Andrew teach and hearing from parents, this is the best writing program. We've made it so easy and made it really affordable. So any mom can teach writing to their children using our course, and we guarantee it. To try three weeks of free lessons, visit IEW.com. We are back with Roger. Um, So Roger, I want to talk specifically to dads. And we have a lot of dads who listen to this podcast. And I'm so thankful for that because it's not a podcast just for moms. It's for dads as well. And dads have such an important role. You know, I think for such a long time, dads have been pushed to the side and said, you know what? Mom's got this parenting thing. You go to work, you earn the money. You bring home the bacon and I'll just take care of the family. And that is not God's design for family or marriage. And so I would love for you to talk specifically to the heart of the dads who are listening and give them some encouragement. I love um, the role that dads play and they need to play. And, you know, the Proverbs, if we read through the Proverbs, it is all about the father speaking to his children. And it said over and over, listen to my wisdom, my son. And so uh, the the role of the father is hugely important. And I want to say it this way, is that uh, whether we like it or not, whatever dad does is perceived to be right and good. And so that's both bad and good. So if you... Uh, as a dad are not engaged, that's normal to the child. If you are harsh in your words and condescending toward your wife, that is normal. You're setting the standard. So dad is the standard bearer. And so it's very important for, for what we do and the role that we play, how we communicate and the values we communicate. So um, I considered... Uh, coming home in the evening, my main job. Uh, And because it has the most lasting impact. You know, in my job here at the medical office, you know, there's going to be a day when I'm not the doctor here. There's going to be someone else and it'll just go right on without me. In a matter of just a very short time, they won't even know who Dr. Smith is. They will have forgotten, but your children will not forget. And so the, the, the impact, the times, the, the engagement you have with them has a lasting impact. And so it's, it's very important for dad to be engaged with the children because, first of all, you are the, the standard bearer. You're going to uh, make whatever their decisions. You, you become the ruler and they'll go, OK, well, dad, you know, he was harsh or he lied. Or he stole. He was whatever. You know, it's OK, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and, and so, um, but you have, dads have the chance to have the greatest impact. And so, uh, I, uh, I love this old country song that, uh, that the dad was working away from home and, uh, it says he called back and, and, uh, while he was talking to the wife, he said before he knew what was going to happen, the child was on the phone and said, when you're going to be home, dad. He said, he said, the first thing that came to his mind, he said, I'm already there. I'm the shadow on the ground. I'm the sunshine in your hair. You know, and he went on to just talking about your influence is there even when you're away at work. And especially if you have the relationship of trust and um, care with your children, they want to live up to the standard that you're setting. And so... Um, one of my jobs in the evening uh, while um, in, when the children were young and, uh, you know, we had to get them fed uh, and then someone had to clean up the kitchen 
And so uh, Jan would clean while I read books and told stories and had joke time with the children. I did the scripture memory with them at bedtime. Uh, that was my time to pour into them. And it didn't have to be real hard, but it was intentional. And uh, it's so easy to kind of unplug and go, well, I've done my doings at the office or I've done my job. Well, no, that was just the groundwork for being able to do the real job. Yeah. And um, and it's the rich time. It's not it's not just all giving. It is, it, it, you know, we are in the payback years now because we did intentionally engage with our children. We lived life together through books, through you know, whatever the kids were involved with, we were involved with them. And now uh, they text me on the phone or call me and say, hey, I want to run this by you or I want to show you what happened today or things like that. So, but the dad is, is not only the standard bearer, but he also can um, protect mom. Yeah. Sometimes mom gets beat up through the day because she's dealing with the, the nonstop issues of, correcting this and getting this, you know, all the different stuff. And just, first of all, don't believe your children and what they say about your <laughs> wife. <laughs> you better talk, you better get it straight from mom first. And so sometimes uh, the, the children can tell you the truth, but sometimes they, uh, I, I've been manipulated before by particularly one of my children. <laughs> and uh, I've, re I've regretted those times where I believed him instead of my wife. Yeah. Uh, so uh, engage okay. with your children, read them books, have conversation, listen to their dreams and uh, wrestle. Yeah. Good stuff. All right. That is such good stuff. Thank you for sharing that with dads. Um, we have just a couple minutes left and uh, really quickly, tell us about your book. It's called Parenting with Influence, Shifting Your Parenting Style as You Grow, As You and Your Child Grow. Here's the book. If you're watching on video, tell us about this. Yeah. And, and so uh, there's a graph in there that shows how we early on in the early years, we have control. We think we do, you know, and we have the most control we'll ever have whenever our child is an infant and very rapidly. Well, in the early first few years, you don't have as much uh, loss of control, but very soon it starts, lo you lose control of your children and you lose it rapidly. And you need to know that that's normal and healthy and appropriate because you don't want to be controlling an adult child. Right. In fact, you want them to take control of their own lives and self-control is the, is, is the name of the game. And so trying to control, uh, maintain control through that time period where they naturally are taking charge of their lives. That's, that's a prescription for disaster and conflict where you're trying to control them and they're trying to control themselves. You know, they want to take charge. So, there are ways that we can transfer that control smoothly and in a positive way. And that's what we talk about in the book is to, to say, okay, I'm going to teach you control because I'm going to control early, but we want to rapidly transition to a relationship where we are giving influence in their lives. And they're calling us and saying, Hey, hey man, uh, this happened. What do you, what do you think? And what should I do? How should I handle this? We want that kind of relationship rather than us trying to, uh, you know, rein them in, so to speak. And there's a there's a time where we have to kind of help them rein themselves in. But but it's really through an influential relationship. And we talk about how to convert from controlling to influencing. And that's what the whole book is about. The whole concept kind of got capsulized to me, you know, in the crucible of whenever I was staring face to face with a 13 year old son that I was trying to make practice a speech <laughs> and he would not. And I realized very clearly he was in control. I could not make him do something. And I went, there's gotta be a better way. And so we began trying to help other parents understand this transfer of control from us to them in a positive, proactive, hopeful way. And that's what we want. Hope in the home where everyone is winning and everyone is smiling. And so that's, that's the premise of the book. I love it. All right. So the book again is called Parenting with Influence, Shifting Your Parenting Style as You and Your Child Grow. And it is an excellent book. We will put links to that in the show notes. 
I wanted to say two more things really quickly before we end. One, I mentioned in episode one that Roger, you and Jan, your wife, your lovely wife, you guys are amazing. You are on the board of homeschool Louisiana, which is the Louisiana state homeschool organization. We've talked about this several times on the podcast, but if you guys are maybe new to the podcast and you're not familiar with state organizations, go to homeschoolfreedom.com. Find what your state organization is. Most states have them. There are very few who don't, but almost every state has a Christian state homeschool organization. And those people are there to help you, to guide you, to equip you with whatever you need to do to homeschool in your state and to stay free to be able to homeschool. It is legal to homeschool in all 50 states today because of organizations like Homeschool Louisiana and Homeschool Oklahoma, where I live, and all the other organizations that exist. And we are so grateful for the work that they do. They do so much work behind the scenes that no one ever sees. So go to homeschoolfreedom.com, find your state organization. If you're not able to be involved in your state organization, pray for them. Just shoot them an email and just say, how can I pray for you? Is there anything I can do to help you if you're able to do that? And just know that they exist, become a member and just keep them in your prayers as they continue this hard work to keep us free to home educate and disciple our kids. And one last thing, if you guys have not watched the movie Schoolhouse Rocked, watch the movie. Roger, I know you've seen the movie, actually, I think probably more than once. (laughs) Give, give your opinion. And I'm not asking this so I can pat myself on the back and say, oh my goodness, we made an amazing movie, but it's not us. Trust me. It's what the Lord has done. Can you give a short elevator pitch on why people should watch Schoolhouse Rocked if they've not yet seen it? Well, you know, the value that, that you place on something uh, uh, is determined by how much you know about it. And uh, what you all did such a great job of is pulling in the players that that were involved in helping bring the homeschool movement to where it is today, and you understand the journey. And so um, there are so many key people in your in your film that that tell their story, that that uh, tell the, the 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 journey of the homeschool movement, uh, and uh, all the different players. And it's not just about the history. You know, they are talking about the value to them, the value to their community, and. And uh, so it, it, it's, it's very helpful to understand um, uh, how did we get to where we are today and why are we here? And also, why is it worthwhile for you to uh, home educate your own children? Mm-hmm. And so uh, it's uh, the why is what keeps us going. Because when t- t- uh, times get uh, tough, and they will, uh, we need to have a reason to keep going. And I uh, think you all did a great job of, uh, of showing that and telling, telling the story in, in the context of your own family journey. Uh, um, and so it's nice to get to know you, but it's also get to, to know uh, uh, why we should do this thing. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. That's a, that's a great review for the movie. And again, it is all by the grace of God that that movie even got done. It is his movie, not ours. And we are so Uh, just in awe of how the Lord is continuing to use this film on a daily basis to impact the lives of people all over the world. It's not just here in America, it's worldwide. And it's just incredible. God is so faithful to do that. And again, Mm -hmm. it was just our, our family willing to say yes and do something hard, just like you guys are willing to say yes and do something hard in homeschooling your kids. It's no different. It's just a a, a different job that he's given to some of us. And so if you've not seen the movie, go to schoolhouserocked.com. You can purchase a DVD or you can stream it through the website, Uh, but gather gather some friends together, have a watch party, or just watch it with your husband or wife. And even with your kids, it is approved. It is Dove approved for all ages. And so it is a movie that is um, appropriate for just about every age. I would say middle school and up is who enjoy it the most. Little kids might get a little bored because it's a documentary, but it also has a story behind it. So anyway, schoolhouserocked.com. Roger, thank you so much for being with us today. I am so thankful for your time this week and for your wisdom that you've shared with us. We really do appreciate it. Do you have a website that people can go to to learn more about you? Yes, rogersmithmd.com is where you can uh, find out more about us and what we're doing. I I say us because Jan and I are a team. Uh, And so uh, it is my website in the book. You can order the book there. Uh, So rogersmithmd.com. I love that. I did notice at the beginning when you said we went to medical school that you included (laughs) your wife in that because 
it, it was probably as hard, if not harder for her than it was for you. <laughs> so yes. I, yes. I appreciate you recognizing her as a team member. She has the hard job. Uh, and so, uh, but yes, we're a team. And so we went to medical school and we had children. And we've done it. I love it. So that, it's just better together. That's right. That's right. Well, thank you again, you guys, for listening this week. Have a great rest of your day, and we'll see you back here on Monday with another fantastic guest. Bye. You're not inadequate. You are perfectly capable. I mean, what is it about a parent that when their child turns five, all of a sudden the parent's no longer a viable option? Like, oh, you're done. Now it's the school's turn. I think the quality of education has steadily deteriorated in America. There is an agenda to steal our children. You feel inadequate because you've been taught by our school system that you're inadequate. We had no frame of reference for homeschooling other than it just seemed like torture. Like why would a sane woman choose to be locked up with her kids for 18 years in a row when a school bus would come and take them away and give you like a nine hour break every day? <laughs> No one knows your child better than you do, and no one loves your child more than you do. And homeschooling changes the game on everything. Homeschooling allows us to say to the child, what sort of life do you want? What sort of God-given dreams, talents, and abilities is he speaking into you? you know, when we think about classroom education and we ask what makes for good education, almost every professional educator will say low student-teacher ratio, teachers who care, good methods, good curriculum. Well, in homeschooling, you get the best of all of those things. What we discovered is that it's very efficient to homeschool. You have the person who knows the student the best. You have the ability to customize the curriculum around the student. You have a great student-teacher ratio. And I realized I am accomplishing with Sierra in 25 minutes to an hour every day what is taking the school system eight hours a day, five days a week, to accomplish my older daughter. I loved watching the, the light bulb come on and watching her want to sit down and read with me. And I loved spending time with her. There's just so many benefits, including being able to have a relationship with your own children. Continue doing what you're doing. Don't give up, because I do believe that homeschool moms are America's greatest heroes.